This is the story of Germany's oldest university and its honorary professor, Pan Zhangwei, also known as China's father of quantum. It takes us into the nexus of academic freedom and national security. The way to think about this is really what kind of work University of Heidelberg wants to be engaged in, regardless of where that work is taking place. Also sollen wir sagen, wir hören jetzt auf mit der Grundlagenforschung, stellen also keine Fragen mehr sozusagen aus Neugier, aus menschlicher Neugier getriebene Fragen an die Natur. Heidelberg hosts many top scientists carrying out groundbreaking work. Little did they know how they would become entangled in China's quantum strategy. So the question is, should German universities collaborate with quantum scientists who are accountable to an authoritarian state? In 2019, a private U.S. intelligence firm published a damning report. It claimed that China is systematically exploiting quantum research at Western universities for the benefit of its own military. Pan Jianwei developed and leads this strategy. Heidelberg University is arguably the most important foreign partner behind China's rapid progress in dual-use quantum technologies. Dual-use technologies can be used in both civilian and military applications. Professor Pan is indeed the driving force behind China's quantum strategy. He's been collaborating with Germany's Heidelberg University on quantum research for two decades. Let's explore the origins of this collaboration. Heidelberg is home to Germany's oldest university, established in the 14th century. It's one of the top universities in the country. The Physics Institute is renowned for its basic research in quantum physics. Emerging quantum technologies are said to revolutionize how we do business, share information, and fight future wars. These technologies will transform our digital lives, potentially even surpassing the impact of the Internet as we know it today. Quantentechnologie ist eine Schlüsseltechnologie. Also dem kann man, glaube ich, nicht widersprechen. Wir wollen das ja auch erstmal verstehen. Ist nicht alles verstanden. Vieles ist nicht verstanden. Und dann natürlich zum Nutzen der Gesellschaft dann auch weiterführen. Aber das machen wir nicht hier. Hier geht es wirklich um die Grundlagen. Das sollte man äh, als erstes mal, glaube ich, klarstellen. Und die technologischen Abschätzungen, da fühle ich mich ehrlich gesagt etwas überfordert. When we think about a field that is emerging technologies like quantum communications and quantum encryption, the future is not predetermined. The path is still contingent. Chinese quantum physicist Pan Zhangwei moved to Heidelberg in 2003. Europe provided him with more opportunities to explore the cutting edge field of quantum communication. <laughs> Pan's work in Heidelberg was crowned with all the major science prizes and close to 5 million euros in funding from Germany and the EU. Alle Grants, die man, die, man, die man gewinnen konnte, hat er, hat er sozusagen gewonnen und damit seine, seine Wissenschaft in Heidelberg finanziert. Back then, Europe, and especially Germany, had begun to seek out China as a major trading partner. This prompted a boost in scientific collaboration, driven also by political considerations. Jan Wei war immer interessiert an, an fundamentalen Fragestellungen, an wie man das 
wie man das alles besser aus, also weiter, weiter entwickeln kann und wie man daraus vielleicht auch einmal Technologie entwickeln kann. Und äh, die Frage war natürlich, je, je, kann man Kommunikation, sichere Kommunikation, über welche Distanz kann man das machen? Professor Pan often went back home to teach and to recruit young Chinese quantum talents for his Heidelberg Research Group. They too received funding. Then came 2008. Pan packed his bags and returned home to his alma mater, the University of Science and Technology of China, or USTC. He took many of his Chinese students with him and transferred his lab equipment and projects to China. Given the current political climate, it's hard to understand how a move like this could have been pulled off. I think with all these export controls or everything that we have installed yet, it's just practically ausgeschlossen. Da haben sich die Weltsichten schon etwas geändert. Das muss man klarerweise auch so äh, akzeptieren. Since Professor Pan's departure from Heidelberg, China has regularly announced major breakthroughs in the field of quantum communication. In 2016, his team launched the world's first quantum satellite into space. A short time later, they used the satellite to establish the first tap-proof video conference. We asked Professor Pan for an interview. He agreed to a written exchange. Despite the fact that quantum information technology still has a long way to go before it can be widely adopted, I firmly believe that these emerging technologies will ultimately bring broad benefits to human society. But quantum technology also harbors a dark side that holds the potential to undermine human rights. I would like to emphasize that any scientific discovery and technology may have dual use. This is not an aspect that a scientist can control or predict. Let's delve into what this dilemma might entail. Professor Pan is the co-founder of Quantum C-Tech, one of China's leading quantum communication companies. In 2017, Quantum C-Tech opened a branch in China's Xinjiang region, where at least one million Muslim Uyghurs have been arbitrarily detained. We discovered a webinar posted online in which Quantum C-Tech explained their services. Access to this video has since been restricted. 那么量子信息技术，尤其是量子通信技术，能很好地解决这个问题。And indeed, there have been major data leaks from the region that have revealed the scope of China's persecution of the Uyghur people. 尤其是西方的一些敌对势力，那么通过对我们内部信息的挖掘和窃窃取，那么我们对信息安全的提出了更高的要求。那么我们通过量子信息技术呢，可以更好的。We asked Professor Pan about the activities of the Xinjiang branch. This was his response. After the early period of founding the company and implementing the technology transfer, I have been no longer involved in managing the company since 2011, except for being a shareholder. The fact that the company was permitted to open a branch in such a highly militarized zone suggests that it has ties to the Chinese security state. Quantum C-Tech did not respond to our questions. It seems to be very much aligned with the strategic and security aims of the state. I think for any individual or entity to facilitate or work with institutions of state violence is morally dubious at best, and to contribute to institutions and instruments of state oppression is always morally apprehensible. Dr. Yang Yang Cheng is a physicist who began her career at China's prestigious University of Science and Technology. 
just like Professor Pan. But while Pan chose to return to China, she decided to move to the United States. Scientists often are driven by an intellectual curiosity and out of a certain political ignorance or just moral apathy or just out of um, a preference to preserve their relationship with the state, with funding agencies, that they choose to overlook or not think as much about the social cost and the political and moral implications of their work. Back to Professor Pan. Documents we obtained showed that after his departure from Heidelberg, cooperation continued just as before. Pan was almost immediately appointed an honorary professor. Academic exchange of quantum researchers was ongoing, and there were plans for a joint quantum center in China. There's also another mastermind behind this partnership. Meet Matthias Weidemüller. The German quantum physicist is an advocate of joint research with China. As a scientist, man is a choice. Man is a choice. Re. Man möchte. Man möchte seine Wissenschaft machen und die möchte man am liebsten so. Die möchte man sich am liebsten irgendwo vor sich hin dröseln. In 2013. Weidemüller joined USTC under a Chinese state-sponsored program that invites pioneering scientists to conduct research in China. Das hat mich gereizt. Also was mich gereizt hat, war tatsächlich die Möglichkeit zu haben, wirklich vor Ort mitzubekommen, wie die wie Wissenschaft Quantenphysik funktioniert. Other scientists turn down such offers, sometimes citing concerns about academic freedom and security. After his five-year contract expired, Weidemüller was almost immediately appointed an honorary professor at USTC, just like Pan Jan Wei in Heidelberg. Also, ich glaube, dass es wichtig war und wichtig ist, uh, zu verstehen, was uh, wie die Entwicklungen in China sind. Ich glaube, worauf man stolz ist, ist wahrscheinlich die Tatsache, dass eine Form von Verständigung stattfindet, dass man sich austauscht, dass man besser versteht, wie sind die Prozesse, wie funktionieren, wie funktioniert Wissenschaft jeweils in dem anderen Land. But in November 2021, the US sanctioned the Chinese lab where both Weidemüller and Pan have been carrying out their research. And remember Quantum C-Tech, the company co-founded by Professor Pan? It got sanctioned along with the lab. The two entities were blacklisted for their alleged attempts to acquire American technology to help China develop quantum applications for its military. In short, they were sanctioned on the grounds of national security. Naja, egal kann einem das ja nicht sein. Ich meine, wenn das... Das kann einem nicht egal sein. Das, also da wäre man ja jetzt dann auch weltfern, wenn einem das egal wäre. But despite the sanctions, collaboration has continued. Heidelberg University insists the work is fully transparent and focused on basic research. Das ist Naturforschung, was wir machen. Dass wir aber natürlich durch die Erkenntnisse, die wir gewinnen, und das sehen wir bei der Quantenphysik, dann auch irgendwann sich dahinter Entwicklungen auftun können, die zu Anwendungen führen. Was wäre eine Lösung für die Besorgnis, um, ihn diese, also um diese Besorgnis aufzulösen? Ich befürchte, ich befürchte dass, dass das nicht geht. Wir können ja, wir müssen, also sollen wir sagen, wir hören jetzt auf mit der Grundlagenforschung, stellen also keine Fragen mehr sozusagen aus, Neugier, aus menschlicher Neugier getriebene Fragen an die Natur. Sollen wir aufhören, uns weltweit über diese Fragen auszutauschen? Germany's oldest university continues to stand by its partnership with Professor Pan. But global politics has taken a turn. China was once seen as a desirable partner, but now Germany and the EU view it as a systemic rival. Wer China zuhört, der weiß, mit welchem Selbstbewusstsein es die Entwicklung unserer Welt entscheidend beeinflussen wird. 
repressiver nach innen, offensiver nach außen. China hat sich verändert und deswegen muss sich auch unsere China-Politik verändern. The German government has just released its first ever national China strategy. The negotiations took months of heated debate behind closed doors. The paper also addresses the science community. China's military-civil fusion policy is placing limits on our cooperation. We are taking into account the fact that civilian research projects, including basic research, are also being considered by China in strategic terms with respect to their military use. But Germany's constitution protects scientific freedom, placing ultimate responsibility on the universities and scientists themselves. So where does that leave us? In addition to Professor Pan, 11 other Chinese quantum researchers trained in Heidelberg currently work at USTC. What's more, Professor Pan and USTC have signed quantum research collaborations with big state-owned defense companies. The Chinese government has actually been learning from the U.S. government, which has been doing, in effect, civil military fusion for decades and very successfully um, from a state's perspective. In his written statement to us, Professor Pan explicitly affirms that none of his projects have received any form of military support since his return from Germany. Even though certain technologies might have military uses, it's not something that any scientist can control or predict. What really matters is that I'm committed to advancing knowledge and creativity to help people and society as best as possible. China wants to have the most advanced army in the world by 2049. And quantum technology plays a crucial role in their plans. So it's not so much about whether a German institution can collaborate with a Chinese institution, but really what kind of work. Once it is created, once this application has been developed, there is no way to put the genie back into the bottle. So, should German universities collaborate with scientists who are accountable to an authoritarian state? In any case, the German government and Heidelberg University are reluctant to draw a red line when it comes to basic quantum research with China.